Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice for radio, so today we are delving back into the standard format of the Pokemon trading card game with some games from Huddersfield Regionals. Now, I have put up two league challenges, one from Norwich, one from Sheffield, both in the standard format. I heartily suggest you go and check them out. And I'm going to be uploading a whole bunch of games from Huddersfield Regionals. Links will be in the description of the videos, so make sure you check all of them out, ladies and gentlemen. A couple things you need to know. This was a Regionals with about 92 Masters, which is very big for the UK. And it might seem like a low amount, but remember, there's about 15 to 20 people who have been to Worlds playing out of those 92. So we're talking a competitive 92. Swiss is seven rounds. It is 50 minutes, best of three. And we are in standard format before breakthrough is legal. So we're talking X and Y to Ancient Origins. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so forgive the camera mucking around just for a second. We are here with the top eight from Huddersfield Regionals at IQ Gaming in Huddersfield, shockingly enough. We have Kristen Gregory on the left. She is going to be playing a speed version of the Rayquaza decks that people have been loving for some time. And on the right, we've got Luke Burke, and he is going to be playing his own special version of Night March. And this was really the first week this version of Night March came out, and since this week... This has really become the standard way to play Night March. And Luke's been a lot of the, um, I suppose, a lot of the reason why. He's made a fantastic list here. Now, we did see Luke in one of the earlier rounds. So, as always, make sure you check out the earlier rounds. Links to all of the ones that we did are in the comments for this particular video. So, Kristen goes first. She's got a Shaman in the active. She's going to want to get rid of that. And out comes the Trainer's Mail. Allows her to look at the top four cards of her deck and pick any Trainer card there. As long as it of course, is, of course, not Trainer's Mail. So she grabs an Ultra Ball. and She's not shuffling the deck. Clearly, she's going back in. She's going to play the Ultra Ball. Getting rid of an AZ and a Skyfield. She ain't going to need Skyfield. That's the one that allows you to have up to eight bench Pokemon. And of course, Rayquaza does more energy for every bench, uh, excuse me, more energy, more damage for every bench Pokemon you have. Luke's Pokemon max out at 110 damage, and that's a Shaman, M or indeed a, um, a Malotic. Most of his, you've got 60 HP Bump Kaboo and 30 HP Joltic. She ain't going to need the Skyfield. As for the AZ, might as well put it in the discard nice and early. She can get it back with a VS Seeker later on. Mostly, most people tend to play one AZ and four VS Seeker, so you're more likely to hit the VS Seeker than you are the AZ. Now she plays a Hooper there using the ability, which allows her to search for three EX Pokemon to put him into her hand, and she's going to be getting, well it varies, it might be two, a Rayquaza, a Mega Rayquaza and a Shaman, or it might be a Rayquaza and two Shaman, depends if she's got the Spirit Link. Now, the good thing, um, and yeah, she has gone for the second Shaman there. If you've got the Spirit Link, then what you can do is go Rayquaza, Spirit Link, use a Delta Revolution Ancient Trait to evolve straight away, and then um, go ahead and, you know, just put the... Um, put the Mega on, and of course, the Spirit Link means you don't have to end your turn to evolve, and the Delta Revolution means you can do it on turn one. But she clearly doesn't have the Spirit Link, therefore she's just gone for the second Shaman. Now she's going to want to get her Altaria out, because her Mega Rayquaza's got 210 HP, and that means Luke is going to need a whole bunch of Night Marches in the discard pile to get the KO. Okay, that's good. The problem is that... It's weak to lightning, and Joltik is a lightning-type Pokemon, meaning Luke is not going to need many Night Marches in the discard pile in order to get a KO. Ah, so we did see a Spirit Link there, and we did see a Rayquaza, so it's likely that she actually had a um, she had it in hand anyway. So she's got the Mega out already. You see her playing the Dragon um, Rayquaza EX there, which is quite interesting. We'll talk about him more as the game goes on. Now here she's got the um, 
trainer's mail. Now, I told you earlier that she doesn't need the Skyfield. Skyfield could be a fun little card to play regardless. First of all, it allows her to actually have um, more bench Pokemon, meaning she can play more Shaman and draw f more cards. Remember, Shaman has the ability that allows you to draw until you have six cards in your hand. And having a Skyfield down just means she can put, you know, eight Pokemon on the bench rather than five. It means she can really get drawing through her deck fast and set up Rayquaza in the way that she wants. Ooh, there comes a Hex Maniac from Kristen, and that's a really nice play there. Because it means that Luke cannot play any abilities this turn. And of course, like every other deck in the format, Luke's Nightmarch deck is going to want to use Shaman setup ability. I've seen Luke's deck list, however, and I can assure you it doesn't need Shaman like that. We've got Roller Skates. There we go. Um, if it's heads as it is, he gets to draw three cards. And he's got Acro Bike and Trainer's Mail and. All sorts of good cards there. We see another roller skates coming down and another heads. So Luke getting lucky there. Hits two heads on roller skates. Draws six cards in one go. Which is frankly ludicrous. But, you know, pretty funky. So Luke's got a whole... Um, we see he's got... There we go, an acro bike. He looks at the top two cards of his hand in his deck. Puts one in his hand, discards one. And luckily for Luke, he gets a Pump Kaboo, which he probably wouldn't mind discarding. And a VS Seeker, which he very much does not want to discard. He's going to need that. So Trainer's Mail comes down, and is he, it doesn't look like he's got any options there. Two Pokemon, a Trainer's Mail, and a DCE. So he isn't going to take any of those cards. He can't take any of those cards. The only trainer there is Trainer's Mail. And Trainer's Mail, unlike the first time I tried to play it, does provide that you cannot... However, he's either just thinking for a little bit, or maybe he's trying to make Kristen think, hmm, is he taking a card? Is he there? Is he trying to make a decision? When in fact, there's no decision to make. Might be mind games, probably just having a bit of a think, to be honest with you. So, Luke here, he's going to want to get a DCE for the Joltik, and he's going to need a total of three Night Marches in the discard pile. Shaman is also weak to Lightning. Joltik's got that Night March ability, which does 20 damage for each Night Marcher in the discard pile. We see an Ultra Ball with a Zerosic and a Joltik there. Putting two, he's got two in there now. And what that means is that he needs... Sorry, he does 20 damage times the amount of Night March in the discard for a DCE. That means that with two in the discard pile, he's doing 40 damage. But you add... Um, you know, you, you double that for the weakness of Shaman because he's lightning weak. And that means that you are, in fact, doing 120 damage with free. Oh, he's got a muscle band. That is how easy it is for Luke to KO these Shamans. And that's why Kristen has really... I mean, she I told you she needed to Shaman out the active. And obviously, she had no way of doing so. She discarded an AZ, but she needed to do so to get going maybe the AZ would have been more useful than the Hex Maniac, but then the Hex Maniac, you saw how much that slowed Luke down. Although he still drew a heck of a lot of cards. But he gets two Night Marks in the discard with the Muscle Band, is 60 damage for one double colorless, and off we go. Even that Mega Ray, and like I say, Kristen also needs to have a, um, she's going to need, what do you call it, a, um, a Mega Turbo, that's the trainer card which allows you to attach a basic energy from your discard to a Mega Evolved Pokemon, which of course the Mega Rayquaza is. She's going to need that because she's not going to be able to attack otherwise. Now, what would be really good here is if she could actually get a DCE and attack with the Shaman. Although I think that DCE, I think it was attached this turn. Um, now... If she had the DCE in hand, I personally would have attacked with the Shaman here. Because Shaman does 30 damage with the um, Sky Return attack, which means you can KO that 30 HP Joltik and take the Shaman off the board. Luke has got an inherent advantage in this matchup because he's going to be trying to one-hit KO EX Pokemon for two prizes, while Kristen is going to be KOing non-EX Pokemon for one prize. So... What Kristen really needs to do here is try and make Luke work for his prizes. The ideal here, and we don't I don't know if she plays an Altaria line. Altaria, remember, has got the ability which um turns off 
weakness for all your colourless Pokemon. If she could stick up an Altaria, excuse me, if she could get an Altaria out and then put a Rayquaza into the active, which has got 210 HP and no weakness, that could, you know, stop Luke getting a KO that turn. Or even if she has a non-EX Pokemon, just putting a non-EX Pokemon into the active, um... Now, it looked like there's some non-EX Pokemon there. I couldn't quite see what they were. It's something psychic. Oh, it's prob... It could be a, um... Could be the Shuppet that discards a special energy attached to your opponent's side of the field. I don't know. I can't see what it is. We see the Mega Turbo there. Or is it Bats she's got there? Um, I, I can't quite make out. Well, it looks like it might be a, um, a Shuppet. But I can't quite see for the time being. Well, yeah, it looks like it is a Shuppet. Shop it's got the attack for one energy, which discards a special energy attached to any of your opponent's Pokemon. The problem with having no Shaman on the board is that Luke can, in theory, on next turn go Lissandra Kiro the Shaman for one energy or double colorless, and then the pre following turn, Lissandra Kiro the Shaman, and then win. So Kristen needs to use a combination of Sky Returns and AZs to get them off the field. And if she can use the Sky Return, she can take a prize while she gets a Shaman off the field, and she can stick up something like the Dragon Rayquaza. Now, I'm not saying Luke can't KO the Dragon Rayquaza, but I'm saying the Dragon Rayquaza is weak to Fairy, so Luke isn't going to hit it for weakness. He's going to need nine Night Marches in the discard, or eight and a Muscle Band, in order to get the KO on that, which is less likely than, you know, getting the KO on the colorless Rayquaza, which is going to take five Night Marchers, which, because five Night Marchers would do, um, sorry, six Night Marchers, which would do 240 damage to a Lightning Week Pokemon. But still, nine is a bigger number than six, as I'm sure most of you out there know. So, leaving that Mega Rayquaza in the active at the end of this turn is making Luke's job easier for him. Now, he's only got two Night Marchers in the discard pile. Oh, and having to dump a DCE there is not ideal. Um, obviously, as all decks, you only play four DCEs, and they are phenomenal. But we see an unknown coming down here. Now, unknown can KO a Joltik. It's got hidden power for one colorless energy, which does 10 damage. If Kristen's got a um, muscle band here, she's actually going to be able to use unknown power to KO that Joltik for just a single energy. Now... I don't know if she's playing Muscle Band. I know she just gets rid of it. You use the um, ability, I think it's called Farewell Letter, which allows you to discard the unknown and just draw a card. So, clearly trying to go through her deck. Now, I don't know what she's trying to do here. Um, I don't think she's played a supporter yet. She might be trying to play Hex Maniac. Because Hex Maniac, again, it would slowly... Ah, there comes the VS Seeker. I mean, a Hex Maniac here would be quite good... No, she's going for the AZ. Hex Maniac would be nice here to try and slow Luke down. Now, we see that Luke's got a whole bunch of cards in his deck, but we know he likes a Shaman. What would be really good here, had um, Kristen been able to get the KO with the Shaman, and then use a Hex Maniac, then she'd be able to take a prize, get rid of all Luke's energy, stick up a Pokemon which is harder to kill, and ability lock him, and she had the cast to do that. We've seen her put down a DCE. We've seen her play the Hex Maniac. So I'm not talking about some weird out-of-the-way play here. That would have been an option for Kristen here to KO the Joltik and Hex Luke while sticking up a big HP Pokemon. Remember that she wouldn't be able to hide behind a Hooper. Hooper, I believe, is weak to Psychic. And, yeah, Pumpkaboo is a Psychic. So probably not a great idea to try and hide behind a hooper here. That's not going to end in a nice, happy, fluffy manner. Um, now, I'm trying to remember if Kristen had a Shaman on her bench at the beginning of this turn. I believe she did. And if she did, then we have seen a slight mistake there because all she's done is just put the Dragon Rayquaza into the active, whereas had she promoted the Shaman, she could have attached the DCE and then used Sky Return, which would have done the exact same thing, 
except it would have got Shaman off her side of the field and it would have taken a prize and forced Luke to find another DCE. Um, so yeah, this is not going well for Kristen. Now, I do need to point out here, and it doesn't look like she is, um, it doesn't look like she's playing Altaria. So we see Luke, he's just drawing through his deck here. He's got a, um, an acro bike there. Especially without playing the 1-1 one, one Altaria, she's just basically playing the game with a whole bunch of Lightning Weak EXs against an efficient non-EX deck that hits for Lightning Weakness. This is about one of the very best matchups Luke could hope for. And you know that, and he plays another Acro Bike there, it's a Battle Compressor, which I don't know if he needs at this stage, but... Well, he's aiming for 9 in the discard. Now, the other thing that failing to get the KO on the Joltik did is it means Luke's got that DCE. So, yeah, he gets rid of the Super Scoop up and he grabs the Battle Compressor, which he's going to use to discard some stuff. I think it was a Battle Compressor. I could be wrong. Um, so, where has had that Joltik gone down? And if I remember correctly, I think Luke's only playing one Muscle Band in this list, although there's no way of Kristen knowing that. So, the problem here is that we see a situation where Luke is just kind of rocking along and he needs eight Pokemon in the discard. Had the Joltik gone down, Luke would have needed nine. And maybe that's the difference, I don't know. But let me make it very, very clear. It's much easier for me to sit here after the fact and watch this game and go, oh, here's what should have happened. Um, you know, Krista made top eight of this tournament. I got 24th, so, you know, there's that. And this is a very, very, very bad matchup for Rayquaza. Luke, watch what you're doing with your deck, mate. And <laughs> Luke's hitting for weakness here, and he's taking prizes. Now, he's already two prizes up. Kristen hasn't taken a prize. If Luke can get the KO here, we see another acro bike, and he's going to have to get rid of the um, acro bike there. He can oh, actually, well, I mean, he's only playing four DCE, but then again, he's probably only going to need three to take three prizes here, and he's already taken a prize without, oh, and he uses the suit goop up there to get the shame in. And he's already got a free KO by getting a KO and not losing the DCE. Now he's got the Feebas down. That evolves into Milotic. And Milotic's ability allows you to grab a card from the discard and put it into your hand. So whereas we've talked in previous games about the difficulty sometimes of these New Age Night March lists actually having DCEs to round out the game, Luke doesn't look like he's going to need anymore. In fact, Luke could already have as many DCs on the bench as he needs to round out this game. He's already got one on the active to get the KO, and he's got one on the bench to finish out the game. Now, I don't know if Luke's played a supporter this game, this turn. He's played a lot of cards. I'm not sure that he has. Now, if he hasn't played a supporter this turn, things are about to go very, very nicely for Luke indeed. Because he can try and get a Lysandra here, and he can get a cheeky KO on the Shaman, and then he can just do that next turn, and he's essentially got the win. It could be that quick. I say quick. We, <laughs> we see how long it can take to get, you know, get turns done with this Night March deck. But, you know, just, just to be clear, if we look at what Luke's doing here, he's clearly not... Um, you know, he's not wasting time. He's not playing slowly. It just so happens that his deck takes a long time to get anything done. But it's also a deck which you got to play it right. You know, he needs to be thinking, what do I need on my bench? What do I need in my discard? He needs to have enough Night Marchers in the discard, but still have enough to attack and finish out the game. He needs to use his DCE, but make sure that in using his DCE, he doesn't run out of DCE for the late game. And, um, yeah, there is no Skyfield down. It, he, is, he has only got six um, bench Pokemon there, though it might look to the contrary. So he hits a heads on a Roller Skates there. He gets another three cards. And, I mean, you've got to feel sorry for Kristen at this stage. This is far from, I, from an ideal situation. Because 
like I say, she's already two prizes down. She hasn't been able to take a prize. And let's say she did what I said last turn. Let's say that she had been able to get the KO with the Shaman on the Joltik. Well... Luke's still looking to get some cheeky K, and there we go. He has he hasn't played a supporter. He's got a Lysander for the shame in KO, so he didn't need. He literally had everything he needed. If Shay, if Kristen had got the KO, he would have needed one extra Night Marcher in the discard, and then he's got the KO on the shame in. And we see he's got a VS Seeker in hand. So, you know, going into Kristen's next turn, she would be down by three prizes, and we know Luke's got game in hand. We know that Luke has got a VS Seeker. We know that he's got a DCE. And these Rayquaza decks, they tend to play one Zerasic. So maybe Kristen can get rid of the DCE attached to the bench Joltik. And maybe she can KO the active Joltik. But even so, where, where do you really go from there? It's not... I mean... It's just such a depressingly bad matchup. It's just... It's just sad. Um, sorry if that sounds like a dep depressing state of affairs. But... Now we do see a, um, a Shuppet coming down. Uh, I believe there's an Ultra Ball there get getting a Shuppet out. Is that an Ultra Ball? Not sure. We see his Shuppet is going to be coming down anyway. And Shuppet's got that. And what's that? That is a. I can't make out what that is. Is that a Bonnet? I think that might be a Bonnet. I'll have to um I'll have to check on this while we record. Again, I was playing in this tournament. No, I wasn't actually. When the top eight was going on, I was I was back down the motorway home. Um But what we you know I'm, I'm watching this game for the first time, and I, I like it when people make me look up cards. It makes me seem like, oh, oh, she's not even playing it. How rude is that? Not even playing it. Um, it might have been a Roaring Skies Bonnet, which has got the ability that each Pokemon tool in play has no effect, which would turn off things like the Muscle Band. Um... That's what it might have been. I don't know is the honest answer. I mean, I don't think it was the Evolution Jammer Burnett, although I suppose it could have been. So now we get the Mega Turbo, so she can accelerate an energy from the discard pile onto her hand, which would be, you know, useful, I suppose. Could be fun. Could work nicely. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's far from an ideal situation here for Kristen. I know I've said that before, but it really is. So she gets the switch. She gets the um, shop it into the active. She's going to use Blair. I think it's called Blair, which allows her to discard a, um, a special energy attached to her opponent's active Pokemon. But I don't really... F and she plays a Mega Turbo there to get the third energy on the Rayquaza. But all Luke is going to have to do is put the DCE, which we know he's got in his hand, onto the Joltik. Play the Ly uh, play the VS Seeker for a Lysander. And yeah, bring up the Shaman. Jobs are good and he's hitting for um, 200 damage on that Shaman with the weakness. And that's it. I, I don't want to say this is unwinnable for Kristen. Now, clearly, I'm watching this after the fact, so I, knows who, I know who wins this tournament. Um, you know, I know who makes it into top four. I, I've not seen the game. I don't know how the game goes, but I do know the eventual winner. I shan't give it away, though. Much more fun without the spoilers. But honestly, ladies and gentlemen, we're basically seeing two very different decks with very different strategies. And if you look at the strategies of the deck, it's all in the favor of Luke. Luke's deck is set up in a way that, you know, he's trying to take down everything with non-EX attackers for, you know, one energy... But he struggles to hit the really big damage. Whereas Kristen is able to hit the really big damage. But is then in a situation where she is potentially going to struggle to, you know, against these non-EX decks. That can KO the Rayquaza. Because 
it, you just lose the prize trade. When Luke's getting one hit KOs for one energy, uh, for one prize, excuse me, if Luke is getting one hit KOs for two prizes for one energy, and Kristen's going for two energy attachments for one hit KOs for one prize, the math just doesn't work there. Now, the way Kristen can get around it is using Altaria and Altaria's ability to turn off the weakness on the colorless Rayquaza, try and force Luke to take some big KOs, although, but the problem there is, firstly, I don't think she's playing the Altaria, and if she is, she certainly didn't get it out that game. Secondly, Luke plays Hex Maniac, which can go through the weakness even if she gets the Altaria out. And thirdly, Luke can get the big KOs. You know, Luke's playing four Lampant in his deck that have the Night March attack but are a stage one, which means you're guaranteed to never start with them. You're going to dump them as soon as you draw into any battle compressors, which means that, you know, Luke's got four Pokemon in the discard just as a kind of starter for ten. And that's before he starts dumping any other Pokemon in the discard pile. I mean, no, he's only playing a total of 12 Night Marchers, so to get to 210 would be difficult, but it's in the realm of possibility. And as we've seen, Chris, Kurt, uh, excuse me, Kristen, I'm going to get her name wrong at some point. I do apologise, Kristen, if you're watching this and I get your name wrong at some point. Please don't hate me. Luke can get these big KOs. He can sit there and pick off Shamans in the early turns, and then, you know, he can make it so that he runs out of Night Marchers right at the end of the game. He's got 11 in the discard pile. Boom, 220 damage. So it really does make it very, very difficult for Kristen to do anything here. Now, she does start Shup It, and one kind of boring but possible way for Kristen to win here is to Shup at him. To sit there and just run him out of energy. You shop at every turn to just discard all of his special energy. But remember, we see Luke plays, I think in this particular deck. I know he sent me his deck list after Huddersfield Regionals just so I could have a gander at it. It was a very nice chap, it's Luke. Um, and I believe he's playing a 1-1 Milotic line. So what that means is that he can use the Milotic to recover these DCEs. Not only is he playing a 1-1 Milotic line, but we've already seen he's playing, I believe he's playing AZ, and he's definitely playing some Super Scoop Ups. So it's absolutely possible for Luke to just turn around and use them to reuse the Milotic and just, you know, off we roll. And that's a little bit of a potential problem for Kristen here. Because even if she tries to get rid of the special energy attached to Luke's deck, well, I'm not terribly convinced it's going to work, to be honest with you. Now, Kristen there, she's using a Battle Compressor. She gets rid of a Hex Maniac and a Zerasic. Both supporters, and like we said in the previous game, if you're playing one-off supporters in a, in a deck with Battle Compressor, a lot of the time it's better to get rid of them with Battle Compressor because you're playing four Battle Compressor and one of the supporters. So you're more likely to draw into one of the VS Seeker with the Pokemon in the discard than with the supporter in the discard than you are to draw into your one copy of the supporter. Now, I don't know what they're talking about here. Luke's showing the pump kaboo. Um, I don't think it really matters, to be honest. To be honest, I think that shop it might... No, the shop is weak to dark. It's not weak to psychic... But anyway, Kristen's got an unknown on the bench. She's got that hidden power, which if she plays Muscle Band, and most Rayquaza decks don't, because when you've got a full bench of eight Pokemon, you do 240 damage, so you don't need to be playing Muscle Band. You need to use the Spirit Link so that you can evolve the Rayquaza without ending your turn. So the, these decks don't tend to play the... um, These decks don't tend to play the... Muscle Band. But if she were to play Muscle Band, she actually could use the unknown to get a KO on the Joltik, and that's just cute. Not the Pump Kaboo, the Pump Kaboo's weak to dark, so the unknown would only be doing 30 damage on that one. But still, it's kind of cool. Kind of cool. So the Hooper comes down, and she's got a Rayquaza. 
Now, Kristen knows she's not going to be using a whole bunch... She shouldn't be using a whole bunch of shame in here. Now... See, the ideal is to try and kill the Joltics with Shaman and the Pump Caboos with Rayquaza and then just hope that they aren't doing enough damage. Although, like I say, it's only six Pokemon in the discard to one hit KO that Rayquaza, five if they've got a Muscle Band. And here's the thing, Kristen's deck, you've seen both games, look how well this deck runs! It's setting up game after game. If Kristen was playing some big EX deck right now, she'd be absolutely mullering it. But unfortunately, she's not playing a big EX deck. She's playing a non-EX deck that's hitting her for weakness. So we see that farewell letter allowing her to draw an extra card. Now, one cool thing here is that if Luke doesn't hit a Lissandra, that means Luke is going to KO the Shuppet, which means Kristen can uh, force Luke into a seven prize game. The theory being, Luke KOs a Shuppet, then Kristen only benches EXs, so Luke has still got to KO three EXs to win the game. So in reality, he's actually taking seven prizes to win the game rather than six, which is a nice little bonus. Um, so Luke there, there's a Shuppet in the discard pass, so Luke's just double checking what it does. Luke, for his purpose, he's going to want to be doing exactly what he did last game. He is just going to want to sit there and try and pick off those Shaman in the early game. And then by the time, you know, as soon as he's picked off two Shaman, he can just go for a big KO on the Rayquaza at the end of the game. And of course, if he's got a Joltic with which to do it, that's going to make his task much, much easier. Um, now, he has got a uh, Pump Kaboo in the active, which means he's going to need six Night Marchers plus a... Or five plus a Muscle Band, rather than three Night Marchers, two on a Muscle Band, which means that Shaman is ever so slightly safer. However, let's not forget the Hooper on the bench is weak to Psychic. So actually, with five Night Marchers, or four in a Muscle Band, Luke could get a two-prize KO on that Hooper. So that's what he's going to be looking to do. He's going to be looking to take cheeky KOs. He's going to try and get his deck running as well as he can without using a supporter. Trying to then use a Lysander to pull up and kill that Hooper or a Shaman. Probably the Hooper because with the Pump Kaboo it's the easier KO. Although do remember that Night March on the Pump Kaboo takes three energy rather than two. So he is going to need a Dimension Valley in play in order to attack with a Pump Kaboo. Dimension Valley, it will bring down the attack cost of all Psychic Pokemon by one, which means he will be able to, um, will be able to attack. Now, you might be wondering, hang on a second, why is Kristen playing the, um, the Shuppet here? What is the point of playing that Shuppet? And the point of it is very, very simple. Rayquaza has a very, very big, very bad matchup against Giratina. Giratina stops you playing special energy, like the DCE that you need. Tools, like the Spirit Link that you need. And Stadiums, like the Sky Field you need. And it's got the ability which stops Mega EXs hitting it. Even if you use a Hex Maniac to turn off Giratina's ability, you've only got five Pokemon. You can't replace whatever stadium, stadium Giratina has put down with a Sky Field. So you are stuck hitting for 150 damage and not getting the KO. So, what Kristen would do in a matchup against something like Giratina, she would just go shop it and blur, getting rid of all the double dragon energy so that the Giratina was unable to get out attacking. And as soon as the Giratina comes out and is unable to attack for the remainder of the game, then we just go ahead and nice and simply use the um, Rayquaza to, I mean, for want of a better phrase, wreck face. You just want it to come out and wreck face. So, Luke started off here. He's got the trainer's mail, and I didn't see what his options were. Um, he's got them face down there. We'll see in a minute what he chooses to get from that trainer's mail. He's going to be looking for a, probably a battle compressor would be the ideal to get here, just so that he is in a position to be able to... um you know, start discarding a whole bunch of stuff. Now, he does get an acro bike there, 
and that's pretty handy because it means he can go and you know he he, he can get going on trying to you know really start doing some damage hopefully he'll be able to discard it oh shaman and a dc oh no sorry switch and a shaman look like a dce there so he gets rid of the switch which he doesn't particularly need to be honest um and this means that he can go straight into trying to you know get get something going with the um you know get something going with the with the shaman try and get some stuff coming down so He's got the shame, and he's got the Feebas on the bench. Now, Feebas is one of those, you don't need the Feebas right this second. You, I mean, you, you, you just don't. However, in theory, in the near future, you might need the Feebas. And there's all kinds of things you might need the Feebas for. Um, there is every possibility that you're going to need the Feebas in the future to... You know, either recover a DCE or recover a Night Marcher, or maybe even something like a Switch, or, you know, you could even use it to recover a VS Seeker, to be honest with you. You know, anything along those lines would, would work quite nicely. So, Luke here, he's got the DCE. Now, he's only got one Pokemon in the discard pile, but he's drawing with Shaman. I, oh, and he's just hit the Dimension Valley. And he's got a Roller Skates there. So Luke's got a lot of really, really useful stuff here. Which is going to do him some good as he runs through this game. Which is, um, well, useful, quite frankly. This is going to do him some good as, as he runs through. So... Well, he just needs to get some Pokemon in the discard now. Just needs to get some of these Night Marks in the discard. There goes the Dimension Valley. So the Skyfield goes away. Neither player has got more than uh, five bench Pokemon. Remember, if they did, then that uh, Skyfield going away would force them to discard until they had five. But that's not an issue. The Super Scoop Up comes down to try and reuse the Shaman. But it is unfortunately a Tails. And now we've still only got one Night Marcher in the discard pile. So he's not even got the KO on the Shuppet yet. Um, but I don't believe he's played a supporter. I could be wrong. With decks like this Night March and the um, Rayquaza, they play so many cards so quickly. It really does sometimes become hard to keep track of who's done what. So at the very least here, Luke... I don't even know if he really... Oh, he's got... Uh, there comes the Battle Compressor. So we can guarantee that he's got the KO there on the... Um, on the Shuppet. Now, what he really wants to do is... Now, if he had a Muscle Band here... You know, if, like I say, four Pokemon plus the Muscle Band would get the KO on Hooper. And that's got to be what Luke's thinking. So he's going to dump either two Lampants and, I would presume, a Lissandra here. Or he's going to dump three Lampants. Because he's already got the KO on the Shuppet with just a couple more Night Marchers. That's not really the issue. But Luke doesn't want the KO on the Shuppet. Because the Shuppet isn't really getting him any closer to winning the game. What Luke wants to do is get a Lissandra and get a KO on one of the bench DXs. Now he's got, you know, to be honest, it's almost worth not taking the KO. Just so you can kind of get set up a bit better. Now he does drop the Sycamore there, which, makes, which leads me to believe he might be playing the Sycamore. And just accepting that he's not getting the KO on the bench this turn. Um, now, we do see he's got two VS Seeker in hand and a Lampant. But, like I say, there's no point playing a Lissandra this turn because, you know, there's nothing to KO with it. He can get the KO on the Shuppet, but he's still going to need three EX KOs to round out the game. So, what would also be good here is an Escape Rope. I don't believe he's playing Escape Rope. Um... I don't know is the honest answer. I can't remember off the top of my head. Ooh, but this is not good from Luke. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it, I mean, it is. It's, it's what he had to do. But he's lost two VS Seeker. Now he does draw into a Lissandra here, and that's really funky. So now we know, oh, there comes a Battle Compressor. So now we know he's got the ability to take a benched KO next turn. 
Um, now, we did see him drop a Dimension Valley off that Sycamore, but I believe he plays four in this deck. So it's not going to be the end of the world there. You know, if um, if Kristen goes and drops another Skyfield to get rid of the Dimension Valley, it's not going to be the end of the world. Luke's not going to worry too much. So Zerosic and Hexmaniac come down from that Battle Compressor. Like we said before, it's just to get them in the discard so that he can VS Seeker for them later on. And he gets rid of a Pump Kaboo because he's not going to need them all. And Kristen very politely asking that, are you going to go back into your deck? As people tend to do, because if Luke's going to go back into his deck, what's the point in cutting it? And he might with that... Um, because we know he's got the Ultra Ball, but not before he plays the Roller Skates. He hits a Heads, that means he gets to draw three more cards. Oh, and two DCE, meaning he's definitely got one ready to go next turn. So, although this first turn is not going to end in quite the way that he wants, and it looks like a, a Super Scoop Up or an Acro Bike, Luke's in a really good position here. He is not in any danger of losing the prize race, as long as he can sit there and get some KOs with Lissandra. And we see he's got a Lissandra in hand. We see he's got a DCE in hand. We see that Kristen has got free Shaman and one Hooper on the bench. So that means that Luke here, oh, and he's got a VS Seeker. This is starting. And this is how silly this, this, this kind of matchup is. I'm already looking at this going, well, Luke's got his first five prizes sorted out. And this is what this deck tends to do. Turn one, you draw loads and loads of stuff. And now he just sits and plays from his hand. We know he's got a Lissandra and a VS Seeker for the next two turns. We know he's got two um, DCEs for the next two turns. So we know that Luke, next turn and the turn after, is getting a KO. Now, this is pre-breakthrough, so there's no judge in this particular tournament. That's the supporter that forces both players to shuffle their hand in and draw four cards. Obviously, there are judges at the tournament. So the only way of really making your opponent shuffle their hand to get rid of ev so Luke gets rid of everything he's got in his hand is either by playing a red card, which nobody's playing. That's like a one-sided judge on your opponent. They shuffle and draw four. You don't. Or an ace trainer, which you play if you're behind. Both players shuffle their hand into their deck. You uh, you win. You're winning, so you draw. You're losing, so you draw six. Your opponent's winning, so they draw three. But I don't think Kristen's playing either of those cards. And Luke would have been paying attention to that in game one. He is an exceptional player. So Luke knows he can sit there and go. Essentially, as long as I've got DCEs and VS Seekers to round out the game, I am guaranteed to win this. Now, I say guaranteed to win. There is one thing that Kristen can do. If she can get EXKOs this turn and the next two, she can win the game before Luke can. She needs a Lissandra KO on a shame in this turn and a Lissandra KO on a shame in next turn. And a Lissandra KO on a shame in the turn after. Luke can't take three prizes in one turn, so that will guarantee that she wins the prize race. But if you look, ladies and gentlemen, Luke has got two shaman on the bench. And even though, you know, Luke plays Super Scoop Up, and even if he can't hit a Super Scoop Up, and even if he's not playing AZ because he's playing Lissandra, and remember that unless you're Jake Wolven in the top four of UK Nationals, it's one supporter per turn, he's only got two EXs on the field. Which means that Kristen gets a Shaman KO this turn. She gets a Shaman KO next turn. She gets a single KO and then Luke wins the prize race. So, oh, there's a nice play there. But of course, Luke doesn't really mind sticking up that pump kaboo. Now, you see there, Luke straight away put up the pump kaboo. You ought to love the awareness of Luke that it was just instinctively putting up the pump kaboo. Because Luke goes, well, Feebas and Joltik have 30 HP. I can't stick them in the active because then um, Kristen will just use Shaman to KO it and take the Shaman off the field. I don't want her to take the Shaman off the field. And I can't stick the Shaman in the active because Kristen can KO them with Rayquaza for two prizes. So, really, really nice awareness from Luke to instinctively put that pump kaboo up, which was unequivocally the correct choice. So, we do see a Zerosic coming down there. I'm just going to mute that just for a second. Sorry that I showed you the, the VLC bar there. I'm sure you will forgive me. And as the Zerosic comes up, She's going to presumably be getting rid of the pump kaboo. Now, I told you. Now, has he got any DC in the discard? 
Doesn't look like he does. Now, this is what I said Kristen could do. Try and run him out of special energy, but remember that he's got those mullo ticks, so it's going to be tough to run him out of energy while taking six prizes. But here, she gets a prize, and she gets rid of all Luke's energy on the field, so it's all right. Now, we know Luke's got a DC in hand, and now... We know that Luke... Oh, and he's got an Ultra Ball in hand. So as long as his Milo 6 not prized, Luke Luke can just sit and win the game here. Oh, and he's not mucking about here. He's going for the Hex Maniac. Now, Luke here, we know he's getting the... Um, we know he's getting the KO on the Rayquaza this turn. He's got six Pokemon in the discard. He's essentially doing 40 per Night March with weakness. That's 240. He's got the KO. We know he had a Lissandra VS Seeker next turn to take the next two EXKOs. And we know he's got a Muscle Band. Excuse me. A DCE in hand. And an Ultra Ball he can use to get the Milotic to recover the um, DCE. Now here, Kristen is going to want to take the KO with the Shaman, and ideally put a Dragon Rayquaza into the active. Luke is going to need another three Night Marchers, well, two once Kristen KOs the Joltik, to get the KO on Dragon Rayquaza. So ideally here, Kristen is going to want to put a DCE on the Shaman, KO the Joltik, and the least killable thing that she plays in her deck is Dragon Rayquaza. Hooper's weak to Pump Caboose, Shame has got 110 HP, and Mega Rayquaza is weak to Joltik. Um, so she puts, she grabs the Shaman, Hooper goes active. Now we know she's not playing the Shaman. Luke played Hex Maniac. I don't think Luke needed to play Hex Maniac in that last turn, but you see, it forced Kristen to just pass. So Luke now is thinking, I can either switch slash uh, Super Scoop up out of it and put a Pumpkaboo in the active. Remember, he would need a, um, he's going to need a Dimension Valley to do that. Or I can just try and get three more Night Marches in the discard, or two in a Muscle Band, and just KO this um, Hooper as is. So the fact that he's discarded a Battle Compressor, a Trainer's Mail, and a Shaman shows us, I would say somewhat conclusively, that Luke does not have enough Night Marchers to be able to stick him in the discard. And this can be the problem with Night March. If you're playing against too many... Um, Mega Rex decks, it can be very difficult to get the KOs on the Mega Rexes. Here comes a Lissandra. So, like we said, he doesn't need to KO the Hooper. Now, I don't know if he's got a VS Seeker in hand right now. It doesn't look like he does. Looks like he plays two Muscle Band as well, because it looks like he's got two in hand. So, this really does look like an inevitability at this stage. So, let's have a quick shout out and a thank you to Terry Goodacre, who recorded this game for us and sent us the footage. Thank you, Terry. You are a legend. Thank you very much to IQ Gaming, who allowed us to record at the tournament. That was awesome. Thank you to Luke and to Kristen for allowing us to record their game, allowing us to put them on stream. Little known fact, you do um, impliedly consent to being on stream by going to Pokemon tournaments, but it's still nice that these people are, you know, happily going on stream. And I can confirm from knowing both of these people that both Kristen and Luke are awesome and wonderful people, as are the guys who run IQ Gaming, as is Terry Goodacre. So, make sure, as always, that you like this video, you comment if you've got anything to say, and you subscribe. I've been putting up a lot of UK regionals videos at very short notice. You know, they've been going almost daily for the past couple of weeks here. So show me that you appreciate the effort. Make sure you watch them, like them, subscribe. And check out all the other videos from this, from London regionals, and if we can get games up, from Sutton regionals, and hopefully from Newport this weekend. Newport's got Breakthrough Legal, so I'm hoping that we are going to be able to get a whole bunch of games from Newport regionals online starting this weekend, so you guys can see how Breakthrough is going to go ahead and affect the format. And I'm doing this, ladies and gentlemen, because I like you. I like you all on a personal level. You are lovely people. So that's my little roundup at the end of the game. I don't see any way. Hey, hey Luke, how you doing? I don't see any way that Luke doesn't win this game. But like I say, Kristen, I admire her for making top eight with Rayquaza because it was not a good choice for the day. 
It's bad against Giratina, which was everywhere. It's bad against Nightmarks, which was everywhere. And yet she manages to go, I think, 502 or 511, something like that, and actually get herself into the top cut. Oh, there we go. Milotic comes down for the Lissandra for the KO. So, well done to Kristen for making top eight with a deck which was slightly out of date at this stage. Although we didn't know how the format was going to go. This was the first regional of the year. And well done to Luke for basically reinventing Night March. As always, ladies and gentlemen, look after yourselves. Till next time, thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.